Hey ladies, it's me, Jennifer Jade. I just wanted to come on here because I have had um, one of the tougher weeks of my life. And um, it's also been one of the greatest gifts this past week because it really reminds me why I do what I do and how I push past even my greatest fears, my greatest insecurities, my greatest self-doubts, my greatest pulls from ego to just stay where it's safe and comfortable and, and easy. So um, I want to share with you, um, you know, I don't want to be cryptic, so I'll just go ahead and share what's happened. But then I really want to move on to the lesson and um, the reminder that I really wanted to, to come across today. Hi, Brittany. Thanks for being here. Thanks, thanks you guys, for showing up. I never know what's a good time for a live, so just let me know. Um, I, I'll ask you that at the end, but I'd love to know in the comments below when actually is a good time for live for you guys. Um, anyways, so last Friday, um, it was a week ago Friday, Okay, I'm just gonna spit this out. <laughs> it's still a bit raw. Last Friday I was feeling really off. So it was about, you know, 10 days ago. It was Friday and usually Friday I'm in like a good mood, you know, and uh, feeling pretty upbeat and, you know, I'm usually feeling pretty good after a good week and working with my clients and seeing you ladies in the group and, and you know, it's usually, Fridays are usually a really good day. And um, this particular Friday, just over a week ago, I was feeling super lethargic and tired and I just didn't know where that was coming from and like... I needed to, all day, I was like, oh, I need a nap, I need a nap, but there was things I needed to get done. And then finally around three o'clock, I just like, that's it, that's all I can do. And I laid down and uh, tried to close my eyes and get some rest because I didn't know what was going on with me. And then I think I'd been kind of in a light sleep for about 20 minutes and my husband kind of poked me, which he never does. He knows better than to wake me up. <laughs> um, and he let me know that, <sighs> sorry guys, <laughs> I thought I'd be able to talk about it, but you know, um, <sighs> we lost a family member and she was young and vibrant and just a really, really amazing person, a really great friend to me. Anyway, she was, she was doing what she does best, being adventurous and living her life to the fullest that Friday. And there was an accident and she was gone. And um, anyways, there is a point to this. <laughs> I just, I'll collect myself. Um, there is a, you know, I'm going somewhere good with this. Um, anyway, so, you know, right after that, we made plans. We had to fly out to Alberta and, uh, be with family, be with the two daughters that she left behind and, uh, that whole thing. So, um, that's where I've been for the past week. So if you've noticed, I haven't been as plugged in, um, over the last week. That's where I've been. I've still tried to find pockets of time to support uh, support my girls, my savvy soul sisters, and the girls in my nine to five escape plan program and in the in the Facebook group. Um, I because I do find, you know, strength from you and it really lights me up and lifts me up to be able to support you. So that was something that was really helpful for me to have this community and have this, you know, you there. Um, so even though I wasn't really ready to share yet what was happening, it was it was just really amazing to have you there. Whether you realized it or not, um, you know, having your light in the group or your presence or your energy, whether, you know, Facebook, Instagram, social, wherever, um, it's such a blessing to me. So that was really helpful for the past week. And um, it really, 
reminded me of why and how I changed my life from moving in the path of, okay, this is the job that, you know, is deemed successful in society. You know, I went into finance and, okay, and, you know, and, and to be a success and to feel successful, you make lots of money and you buy a nice house and you buy a nice car and then you'll be happy, then you'll be happy. Thanks, guys. Um, <clears throat> so... I did all those things and I checked all those boxes. You know, I, I went into finance, I grinded and grinded and grinded to be successful in something I had no soul connection to because I didn't know that existed and I didn't know that was possible and I was told all my life that this is how, you, this is the path to happiness. You know, check these boxes, find a good man, buy a nice house, you know, get a fur baby, all those things. So I checked, check, 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 check. I was in such a rush. And I worked my ass off and I grinded and I grinded. And I felt like a fish trying to swim upstream. And I made it happen to the best of my abilities. And by the time I was 25, I had checked the boxes that, that I had always been told would make me happy. And when I did that, there was still something missing when my head hit the pillow at night. And I thought, what is this? What is this? Like, have I been fooled my whole life? Like... What is this about? And it was around that time, this is in um, 2010, that we actually lost a family member. So that was in 2010. And that was the first time, thank you for the love and the hearts and, and the emotions, I appreciate that. Um, that was the first time that I had lost someone very, very close to me. Um, I had lost kind of some distant people or friends of friends or, you know, maybe a grandparent who was also very sad, but I was also very grateful they got to live a long, happy life. This was a young person who had two little daughters that were six and eight years old who I looked up to as a big brother uh, of my own, and I just watched him suffer and disintegrate for a year. And when he was gone, finally, I awakened to living. It, that was my wake up call. That loss was like, what are you doing with your life? Why are you living like you're gonna make it to 100 or 80 and you have all these years to figure it out and oh, when you have more money then I'll do this thing I really wanted to do or oh, maybe when I don't have this you know, mortgage anymore, I'll do more traveling or maybe one day or I'm too afraid right now, or it's not the right time right now, and I just realized, oh my gosh, what if I don't have all the time in the world? What if I only have 10 years left? What if I only have one year left? What if this is the last six months of my life on this planet or the last 30 days? What am I doing living this life that is completely misaligned with my soul? And that was when I decided I would not live my life like that anymore. And the first thing that I wanted to do was, was find out what was possible with uh, my childhood dream business, which was traveling the world and taking photos for a living and being a destination wedding photographer. So that's when I, I started making my path, like put, coming to this fork in the road and going over this way instead of keeping going on the one that I was unhappy with. And I sought out mentors. I traveled across the globe to, to, to work with them and to learn from them. I went into debt. It didn't matter. Money was not going to stop me from figuring out and learning from the best how I could really get to my dreams and get to them fast. <laughs> I, was, I had a big urgency factor, you know, to really get my life going, the one that I wanted. And I did that for a few years, and it was like the, it was the most exhilarating few years I had ever lived in my life up until that point and I realized I even heard this voice in the back of my head say the only thing that could be better than this would be showing other women how they could create the same in their own lives and that's when I started transitioning from destination wedding photographer into coaching and and teaching and leading other women off of the path that is not lighting them up and the path that's, that maybe they've been draining and they thought was going to make them happy and it's not, to taking the steps, having the belief, welcoming the opportunities, working with the universe in partnership, um, asking for what you want, declaring it, being in alignment with it and, 
and creating the life that you're actually meant to, the one where you feel on purpose, the one where you feel alive, the one where you feel like this is why I was born, this is what I was meant to be doing. And to me, that is just the greatest feeling and that is my signal that I am on my path. This is what I'm here to do. And um, the urgency factor for me was realizing at a visceral, at a soul level that no tomorrow is guaranteed today. And so when I say, you know, it was a tough week, but it was a really great reminder. Um, it was a really great reminder of why I do what I do. And it kind of relit that fire under my ass to get out there and, and reach more people and be more bold with what I'm sharing and how I'm sharing and how many people I'm reaching and continuously moving outside of my comfort zone. You know, I've had this idea of doing more live events in the back of my mind for so long and it's just sat on the shelf because I maybe I was afraid. You know, I, I wouldn't even say maybe I was. Maybe no one's gonna come. Maybe no one cares what I have to say. Maybe what I'm saying is not even helping anyone. You know, all the, 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 the chitter chatter and I'm like, what am I doing here? I'm doing it again. So, you know, this this horrible, you know, human event that happened a week ago Friday was such a great reminder for my soul. And there was a few things that I've taken away over the past week that I was like, I was gathering for you. And I knew that I was gonna come here and I was gonna do this live and I was gonna share this with you. I didn't know if now was too early because as you can tell, it's still a bit fresh and it's still a bit raw, but the message is very clear still. And that's why I knew I had to do this today. So thanks so much, you guys. Oh, I love the purple flower, the grateful. Aw, oh, thanks, you guys. I love it. Thank you so much for being here. So what I wanted to, to take away, and this is what really helped me in, um, even in the first time when I was moving out of the my 9 to 5 finance job and honestly kind of second guessing myself and thinking I was crazy for wanting anything different than what I already had. So many people would love to have what I already had. Why would I risk that? Why would I trade that in? So um, here's how I faced my biggest fears and made my biggest life you know, um, changing decisions. And not only that, but this is also what I filter my smallest indecisions on. This is what, this is the filter that I use anytime I am indecisive about what I'm supposed to do next. And um, I'm gonna share kind of them bit by bit with you today. So um, with this event, um, and her name was Karen, I just wanna, hi Karen. <laughs> Uh, I know she's here because I'm talking about her. I actually have a picture of her and just in case anyone wanted to see, this is, um, oh, there's a reflection of the window there, but that's Karen and I at the beach. I didn't, I don't know anyone else that loves the beach as much as, um, as Karen does. I think she loved it even more than I do. Anyways, so grateful we have that photo. And um, we, when we went to her service, this was, her service was actually on her birthday, which was this past Friday. Um, first of all, we had to get the biggest facility that could hold the most amount of people and it was packed. It was jam packed. I don't even know if everyone could get in that wanted to be there. And I thought, hell yeah, that is the kind of life that you know you lived well. When, when people just are like lining up to come and celebrate your life. That is the kind of life I want to live, okay? And it's not about like, oh, look at how many people are here to see me. It's like, look how many people she impacted that flew in from other countries even to, to be there in person and celebrate this woman's life because that's the impact that she had on them. And I just thought, this is amazing. This, is, this, is, this was a life well lived, even though you know, she was only here a few decades um, she obviously lived life well and she made an impact in the life of others. She didn't have to be literally a coach to do that or literally a motivational speaker to do that or literally, you know, Tony Robbins or Oprah Winfrey in order to do that. She was just herself 
and she was just present with you. She would look you in the eye when she was talking to you. She really cared about you and she exuded love and she demanded adventure and fun and laughs from you. So she wouldn't let you stay in your comfort zone. She wouldn't let you shy away or be afraid of anything. If you were with her, you were having fun, you were laughing, you were doing something hilarious or having an adventure or playing a game or getting outside and you know she changed lives and she impacted lives just by being who she was and and that to me was a huge lesson so um, she had her best friend go up and um, at this service that we had the celebration of life we had for her her best friend went up they've known each other since they were four years old it was gut-wrenching <laughs> to, to um, you know, hear the story. It was, they were great, but they were also really like, oh my gosh, like, I can't believe this is, you know, this is happening. Anyways, um, but she shared so many great times that they had together, and she shared about the void she's going to have in her physical life, even though she believes Karen is still there with her. And I thought, you know what? Everything they're using to describe Karen, I hope one day people will describe me that way. And then this isn't in like a ego, like, oh, I wanna be this, you know, whatever kind of person. It's just like, that's the kind of impact I wanna have. So my question to you is, so number one, I've got three. So the first one is, how do you want people to describe you when you're gone? How do you want people to describe you when you're gone? Are you someone who took chances, who went after your dreams? Are you someone who was present and made eye contact, put social media down when you were having a discussion with someone? Did you live life outside of the box or did you, did you do something in such a way that you inspired other people even if you had never met them before? You know, what is it about you that you really want to exude in your life? And when people go to describe you someday, it's like, it's, it's everything you'd hoped people would have felt in your presence and have learned from you and from your existence. So that's the first one. How do you want to be described one day when you're not, when you're gone? Okay. Um, the second one is, what do you want your life to be an example of? Um, what do you want to teach the world? So this one is a little bit different. So the first question was more like, you know, were you loving, adventurous, present, um, you know, open, uh, vulnerable, you know, what are these words that you really, that's who you feel you are, or that's how you would like to be described when you're gone. The difference with the second question is, what is your life a lesson for? Or was it an example of? What are you teaching? What is the message that you're leaving behind? And I saw this uh, Mastin Kip, who also speaks a lot about purpose, and he wrote um, on Instagram the other day, I'm like, oh my gosh, I took a snap, and it says, how could you inspire those you love most? Not by your words, but by who you become. I'll say it one more time. How could you inspire those you love most? not by your words, but by who you become. That really resonated with me because I've learned in my own life, I'm the oldest of five siblings. Um, I have a mom that I'm very close with and you know, I was always kind of like, okay, this is what you should do, and, and this is how you can be healthier, and this, oh, this is how you'd totally be happier if you did this, and trying to give out all this advice, and trying to be this preachy, you know, person, and what I realized, and they were like, kind of rolled their eyes at me, you know, my little sisters, when, maybe when they were younger, and, you know, I, I'd say to my mom, like, oh, this would be a really great recipe, or this would help, this, I'm sure you'd be happier if you tried this out, and she'd kind of, yeah, 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 not really my thing, or whatever, so then I was like, okay, that's fine, and I realized that I was maybe being a bit preachy, and so I was like, that's fine, I'm just going to be in charge of my own happiness, and my own health, and go after what I want. And when I did that, when I rose up into who I wanted to be and a higher version of myself, guess who else started making these similar, very similar changes in their own lives? And it wasn't through what I said, it was not through my words, it was through what they saw me be an example of. So I really wanted to share that piece. The last thing, um, 
I often share this with my with my business clients. So you know, if you've been in any of my group programs, if you're in my nine to five escape plan right now, um, you know, if you've been a one on one client of mine, often, um, oh hi Lucy, hi Jillian, thanks for being here. Thank you so much for your love. I really appreciate it. Um, what I share with my clients is something about um, always having an urgency factor, and the urgency factor is because the human brain. Um, wants to know why. Why should I do this right now? You know, why do I need to do this now? I can do it later. I'm too tired or I've got other things to do. So the human brain needs to know why do I need to do this right now? So anytime that I'm talking to my clients about a new program they're offering or their one-on-one -on -one services or whatever it is, we then talk about what's the urgency factor. And um, it's got to be an urgency factor that feels good to you. So it's not about being pushy or salesy. It's about what is something that you could offer in such a way that it's of service to both you and the client and it gives that client the encouragement to act now and we know yes or no like within seconds in our soul and that instinct that gut feeling yes or no we know it right away we don't need a day or two or three or a week to think something out we know right away women can tell that right away if it's a yes or no and then what comes in moments later are the fears the ego should i shouldn't i i don't have the money what if it what if the money doesn't come to pay the da 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 da, -da, -da and, and we'll we'll battle with ourselves and the longer we battle with ourselves the more likely ego is to win so um, we talk about urgency factors so if you haven't <laughs> side note if you haven't been implementing urgency factors in your business please do um, but I want to bring this into your your life what is the urgency factor for your life that's question number three what is the urgency factor for your life so this is not about your business it's about your life and um, it's gonna be different for everyone. Um, when I was a part of a network marketing company, we would, we would um, you know, have conferences and things and people with major success stories would go on stage and share. Like I, you know, I was so broke, I had to sell my refrigerator and, you know, to, and put my, my food in a cooler and that, I used the refrigerator to start my, the funds for my refrigerator to start my business and now they're multi-millionaires, you know, so, I, and I started noticing this common theme that the brokest of the broke would have these, you know, success stories and, and it's not because you have to hit rock bottom in order to be successful, but it's that they had a strong urgency factor. Lots of them had kids, they had mouths to feed, and you know, what stronger urgency factor is there than being a mom who has mouths to feed? So, um, you know, I'm not a mom, and I haven't had to hit rock bottom in order to be successful. That's not what I'm saying, but what I'm saying is urgency factors are huge. So for me, my urgency factor, when I left kind of the nine to five routine and started veering off into the road less traveled, um, at least by the people in my, my current surround or what my surroundings were back then, um, my urgency factor was holy crap, someone very close to me who I thought was in, you know, good health, um, has had a little bit of abdominal pain, went to the doctor and was told he had one year left to live. And that's when I was like, that could happen to me and that would not fly with the way I've been living my life. I need to get to work to live the life that I want. I need to do it now, 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 now. I don't know how much time I have left. I'm doing this now, you know? And then there's someone like Karen who's just living life to the fullest, which is amazing. And you know, one day out on an adventure, an accident, gone. So sometimes we have warnings, sometimes we don't. But for me, my urgency factor was, I have this calling in my soul that I want to reach as many people as I can in, in the time that I have left. And I don't know how much time that is. I don't know if I'm, I'm gonna be in an accident tomorrow or given one, left, one year left to live, or maybe I'll live to be 105. I don't know, but I'm not gonna waste any more time. And so that's when I was like, even though I have fears, like everybody else, and I have the ego telling me, who are you to do this and no one cares and you're a nobody, I hear that stuff every day. I thought to myself, the only fear worse than, uh, or bigger than um, 
what if I fail or what if I run out of money or what if I can't put a roof over my head or what if I can't pay my bills or what if everyone laughs at me and what if I become the laughing stock of my, my small town here was what if I have regrets on my deathbed? And that was it for me. That was it. That was when I knew I would be leaving my job. That's when I knew I would never go back. I would never go back to living a life that was anything less than what felt good for me because there's no time to waste. So I want to ask you, what is your urgency factor? What is your urgency factor? What is bigger than the fear of not making a mortgage payment or a rent payment or what if these bills don't get paid or what if you know I run out of food what if I what if 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 these are illusions and they're not real what's bigger than that for you what if you get to your deathbed never knowing what could have been what if you never get to find out what your highest path was for your life and all that you could have been all that you could have done all of the lives that you could have impacted because you were afraid what if I can't pay my hydro bill next month? What if I can't pay the mortgage? And we all have those fears. And the only difference between someone who's out there doing their thing, living their life, living the life that lights them up and going on those adventures and, and whatever it is for that, that really lights that person up is that they feel the fear and they do it anyway. They feel the fear and they do it anyway. They risk the, well, I might, what if, you're right, maybe I won't be able to make my mortgage payment, but I'll figure it out at that time. If and when that ever happens, which 99.99% it doesn't, there are worse fears, how often have they actually come to fruition in your life? Um, and is that percentage big enough for you to never find out what's possible for you? Um, is it worth never knowing what could have been? And to me, I just want to live the shit out of this life. I, I want to know all that I can be, all that I'm capable of, all the lives that I'm able to, to serve and, and, and awaken and um, liberate or free or whatever, whatever I'm able to do, whatever it's a, whether it's a, a small way um, as just being present and having a conversation and helping someone to feel heard all the way to you know helping someone just free themselves from a life that's just not serving them and and really fully step into something that feels like they're in alignment with their purpose and why they were born and why they're here so check in with yourself see if you can connect with what your urgency factor is it can be um, you know if you have kids it can be um, that you want to be an example for them for what's possible. I've heard this one thing and it's like um, from, a, from a mom and she said, how can I encourage my children to follow their dreams and listen to their hearts if I don't have the courage to do it for myself? And I was like, holy, that is so true. And another mom, um, she said, you know, and I asked her, how do you have the courage to do this? And, and and take these risks when you, you do have mouths to feed and you know other people depending on you. And she said, my children are my reason, not my excuse. And I was like, oh my gosh, I love it. I love it, I love it. So whether that is your urgency factor for you or that is your why, or you know if it's knowing that you, you've had that visceral experience in your life that, that things can end a lot sooner than we think, um, then maybe that's your urgency factor. Maybe is that you know you're supposed to serve many, many, many people and, and you're really lit up by serving another person or helping another person that day or that week or creating a new program, whatever it is for you. Um, but I really encourage you to tune back into what your urgency factor is for you. And if that urgency factor isn't lighting you up and isn't inspiring you to take action anymore, then maybe it's about finding what your current new urgency factor is. But please do connect with your urgency factor because the world needs you and it needs your light and it needs you to step into your purpose and, and be what you were called here to be. Because if your life wasn't needed and wasn't necessary, you wouldn't be here. So I just want to share that with you. I feel like I've maybe rambled on a little bit here, um, but 
Aw, thanks for the, the hearts, you guys. Um, oh, I want to see. So Portia says, my awakening was when I was diagnosed with MS. It truly saved my life and opened my eyes. Thank you for sharing this. Oh my gosh, Portia. I, I can so... Um, I want to say relate, but I can't relate to being diagnosed. I don't want to say that I relate, but I just want to send you love. Thank you for sharing that. And what I can relate to is the fact that we go through life thinking, oh yeah, life is short and live life to the fullest. Hoorah. Like, you know, and that's, you know, YOLO and all these things. And that's totally what I believed in. But it wasn't until something just hit me, like just dead in the heart that I really was like, wait a second and I took a look around at my life and I realized it was not the life that I came here to live at least not anymore I'm sure it served me up until that point and I know that I can take lessons from that time in my life um, but it was not the path that I was meant to be on anymore so anyone listening to this I hope these three questions really serve you if you're just tuning in I'll quickly go over them again and they were how do you want people to describe you when you're gone? How do you want people to describe you when you're gone? And when you think about that, ask yourself, am I living my life in such a way that they would? If you want to be described as loving and present and kind and patient and adventurous and fun loving and whatever it is, are you living your life today in such a way that that is how you would be described. And if not, what changes do you need to make? The second one was, what do you want your life to be an example of? What do you want to teach the world through how you lived your life? And then I shared a quote from Mastin Kip. It said, how could you inspire those you love most, not by your words, but by who you become? So it's different from the first question because the first question are kind of words that you want to be described as and then really taking inventory on is that how you're living your life and is that how you would be described? And the second one is more about your message to the world and being the example of what you're trying to teach in the world. Because people will listen more to, they will be more inspired by what you do and not by what you say. So it's easy to hide behind a laptop and you know, tell people to live their best lives and do this and do that, but are you? You know, that's what people are going to really be inspired by. And if you are, are you showing it? Are you sharing it? You know, share the adventurous side of you if that's who you are. Share the luxurious side of you if that's who you are. Be the example. It's far more powerful than just telling people in words what they should or shouldn't be doing. Um, and the third was, what is your urgency factor? And I said, you know, of course this applies to business and I train my clients on that for business. But what is the urgency factor for you and your life? What lights a fire under your ass to get over your fears of I don't have enough money or I'm worried what everyone's going to think or what if I run out of, you know, um, <laughs> whatever friends or what if everyone judges me? What if I fail and it's super embarrassing? There has to be an urgency factor bigger than all of these surface level fears. There has to be something bigger than that. What is your bigger urgency factor? And connect with that and allow it to fire you up to do things that are outside of your comfort zone, reaching for new goals, bigger things, bigger desires, more people if that's a part of your calling, whatever it is, connect to something bigger than your smaller, you know, what if this happens to me or what if people think poorly of me, but what is your bigger urgency factor? So that's what I wanted to share with you today. I don't know if this is maybe a bit of a longer live than usual, but, um, and I apologize for the emotion at the beginning of the video, but as you can tell, it's still a bit fresh and raw, this whole experience. Um, so not that it's bad to cry, so I feel a little bit weird apologizing, but I just hope I didn't make you feel uncomfortable. Um, I'm totally okay with crying and I love, you know, when people are comfortable enough to express their emotions. So, um, lastly, I would love to know, I, I've, I've been meeting some incredible women lately and I need to bring them into our group, into the Savvy Soul Sister Facebook group. I need you to meet them. And I, I would, and they have told me that they are prepared to answer your questions and be here for you. 
and these are extraordinary women like I can't even tell you how excited I am that they've agreed to come do a live in our Savvy Soul Sister Facebook group. So can you tell me with a comment below um, your time zone? I'm in Pacific Standard Time, so I need to know your time zone and I need to know what is the best time that you're most likely to tune in live? Because I need, I want as many people live to be asking questions and not just for you know the guest's sake, but um, but for yours because this is someone who usually charges hundreds or sometimes it's thousands of dollars to be able to connect with them directly and they're coming into this group for free to answer your questions but only if you're there live. So please tell me in the comments below your time zone and the time of day you're most likely to tune in live. So if it's Monday to Friday, um, I actually can tell you right now it's going to be a Thursday with this particular person. It's going to be a Thursday so you know we've tentatively scheduled for 12 noon Pacific Standard Time, but let me know um, for you what time zone you're in um, and during the week, so a weekday, what time you're most likely to tune into a live video because we could do evening as well, Pacific Standard Time. It's just that I know that we have some UK sisters in the house and it would be the middle of the night for them. So just trying to see what sort of the majority would like and uh, I'll make that happen. So. Thank you so much for being here with me today, for being present with me today, for holding the space for me to um, tap into a little bit of uh, more emotional um, feelings today and a more emotional share, but I hope that it served you. I hope you really will take the time to um, maybe journal or consider these three questions that I've asked you today because honestly, they're super powerful. They've helped me connect with my why for my personal life, for my business, for others in the world and to really light that fire under my butt just to overcome these fears, just not pay them any mind and just plow forward into what I'm really feeling called to do. I love you. I'm so grateful that you're here and I'll see you next time.